Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Jaron Lewison and Sterling K. Brown. Give it up. <laughs> My next guest is one of the best high school athletes in the country, the actual country, <laughs> standing six foot five and still growing, y'all. Malachi Coleman was recruited by more than 40 schools to play football. He chose his hometown, signing with the University of Nebraska and Lincoln. Even more incredible is his journey to get here. After a rough start in the foster system, he says kindness and love are the only reasons he's come so far. Now he's giving back, which makes him a rad human. All right, everybody, here to share his extraordinary story, please welcome Malachi and his parents, Miranda and Craig. So meet everybody, everybody say hi. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> So Malachi, it was an extremely tough road to get to this moment, right? Yeah, so my mom was an alcoholic and a drug addict, so she wasn't really in the picture. And my father died when we were young, so he wasn't in the picture either. Mm. So we were homeless, and it was kind of just me taking care of my sister, doing whatever I could. And eventually, my mom, she picked us up, took us to a stranger's house, and said, I'll be back, and that was the last time I ever saw her. But wow. uh, we were in the foster system for about four years and it kind of continued to be another dark part of my life because you've got people looking you in the eyes saying, we don't want you, you're not good enough for a home, moving you on. And even when I got to the family I'm with now, I didn't try and build a relationship with anybody because I was scared and I got passed on. Passed well, why on would you yeah. at that point when you've been shown nothing like that before? Mm -hmm. So, Marina and Craig, you, you never expected to adopt, right? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, How'd that happen? <laughs> yeah. Um, Craig and I had been married um, for about a year and a half and knew we didn't want to have children of our own. Um, thought we could temporarily help one kid in the foster system. Um, started taking the licensing classes and our last day of class, they handed me two profiles and said, we want you to adopt these two kids. And I about fell on the floor. Um, yeah. But um, started doing some weekend visits with Malachi and Nevaeh and pretty soon they were with us full time. Wow. Yeah, he uh, showed up at our house with just a garbage bag full of clothes and a football and a dream to play football. Uh, he had never really played organized sports, but w when we got to talking about it, uh, we went outside and were throwing the ball around. He could throw the ball harder than I could. <laughs> <laughs> so he would really, as, as the visits came along, he would really start to kind of burn hot if we had to tell him some bad news. So yeah. we used that to our advantage. And actually, uh, right before football practice, we would go ahead and give him the bad news and tell him, go burn it off. <laughs> yeah, I heard, like learned. Yeah. 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 I imagine a lot of that had to do with fear, though. Fear of like, you know, the same thing that had been happening your whole life was going to happen again, you know, Absolutely. When, it came, when it came to stuff like that. Sterling, this is kind of incredible because I mean, this is a similar story to like, you know, this is us. Yeah, like, it yeah, is. That, do you ever have families stop you, by the way? Because it's such a, it seems like such a particular story, but I think a lot more families can relate to that message and, and what the family went through. All the time. Like yeah. in airports, blended families will say like, you gave us the courage to open up our hearts to bring this young person into our lives or what have I, I just want to take my hat off real quick and just say like, to not think that you were gonna have a family, to open your heart up, to know that you had the, were in a position to give love and an environment to a young man to foster into the best version of themselves. God bless you all. That's yeah. gorgeous. That's gorgeous. You're awesome. Yeah. 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 Have y'all, did y'all ever see This Is Us? Have you ever seen it? Because it's kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. nuts. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, we did watch it. Um, we actually sat down and watched it as a family, and it was really kind of interesting, the conversations that came up from watching. Yeah. That's what I mean. Um, That's nuts. Yeah, the similarities. It's, yeah. It stirred some, some pretty deep conversations. Yeah. Which is actually really great. What a powerful, what a powerful vessel that show was for probably so many families. To, it's hard for people to have conversations in any family. It's those hard conversations that progress us as a family, but it's for somebody to make that first step and to be open to take it is a big deal. Um, Malachi, you say sports weren't enough though, so that, that you, were, you were still struggling, how so? Yeah, so I was still empty, like emotionless person. I was always running hot. Feeling a little everything. vacant. Yeah. yeah. And my mom noticed that, so she sat me down at the table and she had a conversation with me and she wanted me to find a way to help one person, just super simple tasks, everything, something you can do every day. Mm -hmm. And I was being very naive. I said no to everything for about 30, 40 minutes at that table. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, kind of in despair, she said, can you hold a door for one person? And I thought about it, thought about it for a second. I said, yeah, I can do that. So I did it the next day. 
and the appreciation that person just showed me, just that little quick thank you, yeah. is something that, that I never had up to that point in my life. I never had the feeling of being wanted. I never had that, and it just made me want to do it more and more. It made me want to open my heart up to everybody that I possibly could. So that's kind of what yeah. yeah. Okay. It's all from like opening a door. <laughs> like, I'm like, um, what an incredible idea. After the 40 turn down ones. <laughs> so you, so Miranda, you were you were shocked by the turnaround, right? Absolutely. So. Um, I really kind of thought it was over after that day. I wasn't bringing it up again. We, that, was a, that was a long conversation. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but over time to watch it unfold, really, um, seeing him you know, randomly holding a door for a stranger or for Craig and I or for his sister and then the whole congregation at church and just to start seeing that unfold um, turns into, you know, he's playing high school basketball and um, there was a gentleman struggling to get to his seat and he, it, during warm-ups, leaves the court to go help this gentleman to his seat and then goes back like nothing had happened. And Ooh. just seeing it unfold, what his heart really was um, right before our eyes it was great. And you're honestly probably seeing who you really have been the whole time but have never been given the chance to mm. show. 100%. <clears throat> right? So that's the most beautiful part. So Craig, Miranda, Malachi did something that surprised both of you, though. What was it? All right, so Nebraska recently passed an opportunity for high schoolers to profit off of their name, image, and likeness. Which is <laughs> yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And it still allows them to keep their amateur status. And so unbeknownst to us, he would actually go out and do the research, contact the governing body there in Nebraska, and figure out what he could and couldn't do to really be able to make money off of his NIL. Yeah, yeah so he came home. Smart and said, I'm gonna reach out to Nick at Muchachos, um, a local burrito shop in, in Lincoln, and I'm gonna ask him if he's willing to do the first uh, high school NIL deal. So we went down and met with Nick, and he has his own burrito called the Giverito. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, that's incredible. Yeah. I think this is what I love too. So Malika, how do you wanna use the money? Um, I'm making sure that it's given to foster care kids that didn't have the same opportunities that I had. So recently, I started a foundation called Fall Like Kai, Kai being my nickname to all my yeah. family and close friends, where I'm able to do that so they can do any activity they want, whether it's arts, whether it's music, dance, sports. I want them to have the opportunity to kind of take care of themselves in a way that I couldn't. And find person. themselves. Like, I'm, I found myself through art. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like mm -hmm. once you find something, like, you're passionate about it, you feel like people are recognizing that you're good at. Like, sports for you especially. Like, there's a level of confidence that comes from that and changes your personality and, and who you become, like, in the future. It's so important. And the fact that you're so young, you've been through so much, and your first idea is to give back to the kids that you were. Yeah. Like, that's an incredible heart you have in there, just letting you know. You're being a good example for your sister as well. Like that's a that's a cool thing. Always looking out for your your little sister. So, Jaren and Sterling, have have your personal experiences inspired you to give back? Like since you made it, you know we made it, and what we wanted to do. Absolutely. I mean, like, I you, nobody gets to where they are by themselves. Mm -hmm. And like, if you think that you do, then you got another thing to think about. So, whether it's through mentoring, whether it's through charity, through altruism, or what have you, like Brown loved kids. Like so, anytime there's young people involved, I try to. Be, be involved. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, I think that it's exactly that. And I think giving back and investing in local communities and, and things that you're passionate about are always ways that you can inspire positivity. Yep. Something that I definitely want to do, like I'm really passionate about mental health. Like I would love to follow in your footsteps and do some kind of a charity working with kids through sports. I also, I played football in high school. I was not as good as you, but like <laughs> I, did, I did play. And I think that it's a really great way to, to help and Again, like invest in a community and make a difference. So it's it's amazing what you're and doing. It's that opportunity, amazing. right? Like, cause I grew yeah. up like without any money, and it was like the the opportunity that like, cause people forget arts and even you know athletic athleticism, all that stuff in school. I realize it isn't the straight up academics part of school, but it's just as important mm -hmm. for mental health, for like finding that. your circle and your friends, for. Figuring out who you are, it's so important. And that like really saved me and I think a lot of people. So how do you feel about how far you've come? Because you're so young, you're, you have so much to do. But how, how do you feel about how far you've come? Without these two people right here, I would not be, 
I don't even think I'll be alive today. I'm not gonna lie. Ah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You already made me cry once, now. <laughs> We reached out to our friends at Dude Wipes, um, who love supporting great causes, young entrepreneurs, and keeping dudes fresher, y'all. Uh, so they also love what Malachi is doing, and they want to help his not-for-profit get off the ground. So they're donating $15,000 to help out. <laughs> like, get it, Dude Wipes? I was like, all right. Yeah. Yes, you're going to create opportunity for other kiddos. It's so great. Thank y'all so much for joining us. We adore your family. Let's do a short break, everybody, and we'll be right back with what I'm liking. Thank you, guys. Y'all have a great night. I'm going 